everybody, I'm Amy. I'm Dan. And we are the Hustle Couple coming at you today with Wednesday's snowy Dallas, Texas daily grind. <laughs> Yeah, we're probably gonna be kind of stuck in the house today, sorta. I got snow day here. Yeah, it's fun. You guys know what I mean, right? Like when it's snow day, you have to be a certain way. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Okay, today in fabric, fabric, fa how you say? Mm -hmm. Fabric February. Thank you. Sure. Uh, we only have two days left because Friday, I did the math yeah. and Friday is a Q and A. Right. So we have to get cotton in two days. Oh man. Caught up on the cotton. That's a lot of that's a lot of stuff. It is. Uh, it's going to be a little bit of a difficult conversation today, but we got to have it. Okay. Cotton has a very rich history. Yeah. I meant that in all the ways possible. <laughs> okay. So you ready? Uh, yeah, I'm you ready. Ready to learn? I'm ready. Okay. The oldest cotton fabric. Okay, that means that this thing. I'm going to explain this later. Okay. It was made into a fabric, and then we found it. Dates from 6,000 BC in Peru. Whoa. Cotton is very around, old. It's been around a long time. Very, very long time. Okay. Much more than some of our other fabric counterparts. Uh, we have found cotton balls in Mexico dating from 5,500 BC. And by 3,000 BC, we know that in Mexico, cotton was grown and processed and made into fabric. 3000 BC. Yes. And that's okay. in Mexico. That's what we know. I'm I'm gearing most of today's discussion on the Americas. Okay. For most of our audience. But there is a very long history of cotton in places like India and the Middle East and even China. Lots of Asia. Okay. So you can look into that if you're interested. And tomorrow we're going to talk about the different types of cotton and one of those is Egyptian cotton and mm -hmm. so we'll we'll talk about that too. Cool. Okay. Okay. Uh, in the 6th century in India, they had a handheld cotton gin. Seriously? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, we all think of, who do we think of with cotton gin? Go back to history, 5th grade. Eli Whitney. There you go. Yep. So, but he was like not the first, okay? This was the 6th century. India, handheld. I don't know, it was probably some kind of sifter. Okay. Yep. I don't know, I've never seen a picture <laughs> of it. Alright, so the... Cotton was also a common fabric during the Middle Ages. We know this from like A Knight's Tale. <laughs> That's where I get all right. my Middle Ages info <laughs> from. It's called a long salle. <laughs> right? Am I right? Okay. But we know from the long garbs and tunics and the flags and all of that. Okay, great. And we know that it was introduced to Europe because the Muslim conquest of the Iberian Peninsula in Sicily. Mm -hmm. So they conquested those areas and they brought with them the cotton. I see. And then Europe was like, oh. Oh, this is nice. Oh, this is very nice. <laughs> and then Sleeping Beauty comes around and we get the spin, spinning wheel uh -huh. in the 1300s. Oh, that, that was that yeah. far removed. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So 6,000 BC and then Europe finally you know, uh -huh. gets on board right. in the 1300s. And they're like, oh. 1300 AD? Yeah. Okay, so we're talking like almost 8,000 years later? Yeah. Yikes. So Columbus sailed the ocean blue, and then <laughs> <laughs> he arrives to the Bahamas, and the natives were wearing cotton garments. Huh. That's why he thought he was in India. Did y'all know this? It was because of the clothes. Are you serious? Yes, he saw the natives wearing cotton. Okay. He was like, oh, I must, I must, must be, be in, in India. India. <laughs> Because cotton was very prominent in India. No, he was in the Bahamas uh -huh. and Cuba. Okay. Moving on from history. Somebody's working <laughs> up. You want to learn Mojo. about cotton? Cotton cat. All right. Okay. We get to the East India Company. I'm sure you remember this from your history class. And cotton rises to global importance because the English start to favor it. Right. The English want cotton dresses, they want their calico and chintz prints, and they will not be without. <laughs> so, the, so they're moving away from wool and towards cotton. Yes. Okay. But see, cotton needs a hot climate to survive. And to grow. Right. And England okay. is not that. It's definitely not. So they have all the sheep, and they're like, meh, okay, but <laughs> no cotton. So they have to start importing it from India. Okay. Great. Then comes more war 
and England is not able to get as much cotton from India and the prices skyrocket. So they're like, hey, we got these colonies over there and they got some warm weather. Let's try to make this ourselves and import it from the colonies. Okay, then there was a war in the colonies and the colonies had cotton farms. This is where it gets good, y'all. Stretching it out over here. Cotton takes, this is Mojo, he's our cat. Do all your cameo, Mojo. <laughs> His face looks like mm -hmm. I know he's so he's like still waking up. Okay. This is a simulated cotton thing. Okay. Okay. So these are the fibers that you pick and right. this this bud is closed and that's called a bowl. Uh -huh. B O L L. When the okay. bowl splits open, you can pick the cotton out of it. Yes. Notice these are pretty sharp. Yeah. Yeah, that's no joke. Yeah. So picking the cotton out of this is a very laborious task. Once you pick the cotton out, then you need to separate it because there are seeds and all kinds of nasties in here and you just want the fluffy white lint. Yes. Okay, so there, it's a very, very slow process. Looks like it So cotton thrived in the South and they were like, this is great. This, we're talking 1780s, 1790s. And they were like, this is okay, okay. They had some slaves come over, but then they were like, what? We can't produce enough of this to pay for the slaves. <sighs> The sli you know, housing them, right. not paying the slaves, mind you. I mean upkeep, housing uh -huh. and feeding their laborers. Okay. So they're like, we're not gonna do this cotton thing anymore. Like this is just not gonna work out for us. And it's I- It's not cost effective. It's not cost effective. You know, <laughs> you know Americans are always all about the money. So they started in the, they started by exporting 200,000 pounds a year of cotton. 200,000 pounds. This is 1791. Okay, that sounds like a lot, but no. Okay. That's like a tr like a few truckloads. Okay. I don't know, like a container. Okay, it's not a lot. <laughs> and cotton's very light. Still, it's still not a lot. Okay. Compared to what like India is exporting. Sure. All right. So they're like, this is just not good. And the tobacco fields, they were kind of like dead too. And everybody's like, eh, we don't really need slaves anymore. And so at the end of the 1700s, even the South, they were like, nah, we're good. And they they all signed unanimously to outlaw slavery. Okay. Okay. Then our friend Eli Whitney comes in. Oh, this guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he uh, invents the cotton gin. Right, which is a machine that does what? It takes the cotton yes. and separates it. Okay. And makes it workable. That's... So a machine does it. So it's the, the laborers and slaves yep. had to pick this part. Yep. But right. they could just take this whole thing now. Oh, okay. 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 And then this goes into the cotton. The gin. The gin. Right. And then, and the gin was on the plantation. Okay, and that, that's that's what separates the fiber from like the husk and the seeds. Yeah, and all the it separates seeds. all of it. Okay. Okay, and today we have machines that do this. Right. So they don't even have people in the fields picking cotton anymore for the most part. Right. Okay. So I'm gonna go through, since we have a little extra time today, since we don't have a ton of shipping, and I'm gonna tell you this whole process, how it works. Okay. Because. Cotton is the fabric of our lives. It is the most worn fabric in, in the world. In the entire, still. Yeah, yeah. And I think we should have a little bit of understanding of its history and a little bit, especially for Black History Month, uh, we should pay a little bit of homage to the people that made this industry thrive. Sure. By no choice of their own. Okay? Also, yeah. All right, so 1793, we I'll get- take the prop. Thank you, we get the cotton gin. And all these people were like, we, we don't need slaves, except that we do. Whoa. Whoa. Ex nay what I just said. Let's get those slaves back and get 10 times, 100 times more because now we can produce cotton because the, the holdup with cotton was not that they couldn't grow enough. Mm -hmm. They couldn't pick enough. Mm -hmm. It was too slow. Okay. okay? And, the, and the profit margin was too low. But with now with the cotton gin, right. all bets are off. I see. So in the South, the plantation owners said, okay, this is, what I'm about to tell you is from 12 Years a Slave. It's an essay written, and I think there's a movie. There is. Check it out. Uh, it's a firsthand account. So this is what used to happen. The slave would get to the cotton field when it was picking time, which is like August to September. That's normally when cotton, and from sunup to sundown, their first day on the job, they would be whipped to see how many uh -huh. stalks of cotton they could get these yes now here's the thing you couldn't break any branches or you would be whipped okay and you were weight your cotton amount was weighed at the end of the day 
So you had a bag around your neck, and a lot of times cotton is very short, like three feet. Okay. So you were on your hands and knees picking these things without trying to break the branches and damaging the plant. Uh. And you were loading them into a bag, and then you would walk, once your bag was full, you would walk it all the way down to the end and start loading up your bag. So you'd do that over and over and over again. And at the end of the day, you would walk all of your cotton up to the gin. Uh And that was normally about 300 pounds for an average guy in cotton. Okay. And so on that first day, they whip you so that you're going as fast and as hard as you can. And then that's your baseline. And so they would take that way it and they would say, okay, well, you need to do that tomorrow. Without being whipped, without that, that, so it was like the sweating process going to the gin every day to see if your weight would, right, would match. Because if you didn't, then you got whipped again. Oh man, okay. Then, if your weight was higher. Uh huh. So, like, if you did extra. Uh huh. Okay. That became your new normal. Oh, you gotta be kidding. From su- for 13 hours a day. Oh my god. Back breaking work. And look how rough this is. Hands, I mean, Tear up your hands, arthritis, your back. I mean, you got to be like, how do you not, how do you not get this like soaked in blood? Uh, you're scratched up and bleeding, right? I mean, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it was. I mean, vigorous. Work. I'm not trying to be nasty. I'm just like, this. This is no joke. Like, right. I mean, this is actually this hard, right? This yeah. isn't just because it's right. a fake, right? Right. Oh, okay. Uh, it's not a thorn, but the the bowl is I very mean, it rough. Might as well be. Yeah, yeah, it feels like a thorn. <laughs> so. Cotton has a very loaded history. This is not just in the United States. It's just in the United States where we decided to have people work not without their own free will to do it. But yeah. there is a long history in other countries of child labor, of underpaid labor, of that kind of a thing right. with cotton because it is so, so labor intensive. Yeah. Right. Okay. So I think we need to think about that when we are understanding the history and how cotton got to be so prominent. These plantation owners were making bank. And so they would have a hundred slaves. Well, if I can make bank with a hundred slaves, how much could I do with 500 slaves? Yeah. How much could I do with a thousand slaves? And so that's how the slave trade really ramps up because at the end of the 1700s, it was all but dead. Right. So we have by 1801, which is 10 years in a 10 year span from Mm -hmm. 1791 to 1801, 48.5 million pounds was being exported of cotton. So we went from 200,000 pounds to 48.5 million pounds <laughs> in that, 10 years. That is ridiculous. But that's not even like the height of the cotton production. That's okay. 1801. Think about the Civil War starting in the 1860s. Yeah. So wow. 60 more years of this multiplication. Jeez. Soon enough, the U.S. is the leading exporter of cotton in the entire world okay i can see that yeah yes <laughs> and plantation owners are huge rich i mean big money rich and more than paying for the food and keep of the slaves and then the slaves are having children because it's been generational right. at this point yeah and they are just compounding this money wow this leads to the civil war because there is nothing that's going to keep those farmers away from that money and we know that money drives a lot in this country i'm sorry a lot everything right (laughs) and and so if we look back at the civil war and we look back at our textile history we can't ignore the fact that the cotton gin probably catapulted us into a civil war yeah in in some way it was a catalyst definitely definitely a contributing factor right and that's i mean yes it was good for technology but whoo not great for humanity that's it that's cotton all for that okay so can't recommend 12 Years a Slave enough. That's It's a very short essay and very, very enlightening. I would definitely read it if you're interested. Um, and tomorrow we are going to explore the four main types of cotton, which are Pima, Egyptian, Upland, and Organic. And we're going to say what makes those different and what kind of cotton, because bleached cotton is mm-hmm. a thing now, but really the purest form of cotton is a really bright, fluffy white. Okay. And the longer it sits in the bowl, Yeah it will turn start to turn yellow or gray. Okay. And so we get these variations on quality, which we will talk about. Okay. I will mention that there, if you've ever heard of something called a bull weevil. I have heard of that. You may have heard of it from a little song from the President of the United States of America. Uh, that was like a critter uh-huh. uh, that destroyed Lips. cotton fields. It, well, I mean, yeah. The U.S. got hit hard. In fact, it's illegal to grow random cotton in Florida still to this day. 
Oh, because of potential weevil infestation? Yep. Wow. Yeah. So go. if you're interested in that, that's something else you can look up too. Just trying to put it all out there so we kind of know all these words we hear in context and put them with some sort of historical relevance for you. Cool. Thanks. Yes. <laughs> and now. Now. We get to go ship our limited things that we have today. It's a little slow day. I mean, I think slow. it's snowing everywhere. Yeah. All up and down the middle of the country. But you know what? That's okay. We'll take the couple of sales that we got. We'll pack them up and get them out of here, and hopefully it'll start to spur more for today and tomorrow. And we have a bins haul. <gasps> we do? I didn't know that. Yeah. Surprise. Stay tuned. Action. All right. What's happening? Nothing. That's happening. Yeah. Nice. Whoa. All right. Uh, we've got our five things pulled, and we're going to get these things packed up and out of here. Look at that. First sales going international. Gotta love it. Okay. There you go. All right. These are Lane Bryant, and we told you on Dollar Day we'd just go pick up all the shorts. This is no exception. I'm sure you guys know the Lane Bryant logo, but I'll show you anyway. Okay. Uh, okay. These sold for, I think, $19 plus $4.99 shipping. Yep. And... Um, they're just a basic, but we have our closet, or our store. <laughs> I never know what to say. Because we have a closet and a store. Uh, packed with this kind of stuff for days like today, <laughs> where we need a sale. Because, you know, all seasons aren't going to bring high dollar sales. So if you only have high dollar things, some days you're just not going to sell anything. That is absolutely true. So we try to balance it out, and um, we don't bring crap. Now, hear me. You hear me. <laughs> We don't bring in crap. These Lane Bryant shorts were in very good condition. In fact, new without tags. We wouldn't have picked them up if they were flawed or anything like that. Just because they were a dollar. We just, if they're basic and we have a good sell-through rate, we will get them. Yep. Okay. All right. That's great. Awesome on the scale. And toss them. I just gingerly like placed 12 them. 12 ounces to me. 12 ounces. Great. Actually, less than that because our scale is not zero. Okay, another one. We really need to bring in the other scale. We're still at 12 ounces. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, Tory Bird shoes. You want to put these in a padded or you want to put those in a box? Uh, how much do they pay for shipping, please? Um, $8.99. These are the second time we have sold these. They are not in great condition. So I did take an offer of $30 on them. We had a return for color the first time. She just didn't like the color. Mm. Um, hopefully these don't get returned for it because it's sold at a lower price point. Yeah. What did they say? What did they pay? Eight ninety nine. Okay, and these sold for thirty. Right, and they're going to Ohio. They are going to Ohio, so maybe a. St so a regional is nine twenty seven. A regional A is nine twenty seven. Um, right. What padded is? Padded flat rate is like what eight dollars and change. What is a small? Uh, what is that small box? What small box? You know, that one I'm always trying to use. It depends. Well, why don't we check it? It depends on the weight. I mean, these are these are nothing. Well, I I mean, I still, yeah, but ten ounces. So that, I'm just that, wondering. That's a small flat rate. That's not the one you're looking for. Yeah. Uh, what am I looking for? You're a looking seven? for a, a ten ninety six L. <laughs> he knows. That's what they're called. Yeah. But I don't think it's. Is that one of these? Yeah. I would just like to know. Just curious, since people are watching and they might be curious. Sometimes, you know, it just depends on the I weight, the size. I just don't, I don't think they're going to fit. Mm, you'd have to put them in there in a diagonal and they would fit. And yeah, no, it's not the best. No. I still don't want to put them in a flat rate, though. Do I? A padded? I mean... Some people ship all of their shoes in padded flat rates. Yeah. Every single time. Well, let's so. put some air bubbles in them at least. Some get smashed. Okay. I don't. I don't know. What is this? What does this cost? Let's just do a little. We got time today for a little experimentation. Sure. Prefer them to go in a box if at all possible. Fourteen ounces. Perfect. So, what does this cost? I don't know. I have these many. It's 14 ounces, first class. Oh! 
Oh. Yeah. <laughs> if it's first class, you don't need the measurements. It's just exactly. so it'll cost like five bucks. That's way cheaper. Yes, Amy. Yes. It takes me a while, y'all. It takes me a while. Oh wait, no, no, don't use those. We need those. Use these. Okay. Right. No, those won't fit. Oh. <laughs> Never mind. Blame. Okay, do you need some packing material for these? I don't think so. I don't think we should waste any packing material because, like, I mean... Here, how about this newspaper? Yeah. This puts it over, though. Gotta stay in the loop. Oh, yeah. Point four. So if we get a return on these, we have decided we are not going to take them back. We will just refund and move on because burn me once, twice, you know, that's it. I was about to mess it up real bad. <laughs> Why, though? I don't, I don't follow your logic. Because, because I think that they're, they're too worn. Okay. Okay. You know what I mean? And I don't want to lose out on the shipping to ship them back. Mm. But if... The first time we didn't because it was her her choice. I think. Right, but I think something subjective like color, that's... I don't right, think but I'm that's... saying in my heart, I think that they're pretty worn. I see. In my heart. Okay. My poor little reseller heart. That's why I sold them for 30. 16 ounces, okay. All right, where's the ticket? We don't have a ticket. We need a new ticket. Okay. Because these got the return ticket. Okay, so next is... We don't remember what the L4183. This is a great brand. I used to think that it was like the be-all and end-all because I had never found it, and I thought it was going to sell for a million dollars. It does not sell for a million dollars, but it does have a great sell-through rate. Are these the, sh the ones we got off Facebook? No. Do you have any idea what we pay for these shoes? No. It's not still in Vendu? Um, I don't know. I'm just looking for something to put on the ticket for right now. Okay. These are, this is Peruvian Connection. Great brand. Fantastic. 100%. Always pick it up if you can get it for a good price. Yeah. However, the comps aren't insane. This sold for uh, 35 But I used to think it sold for hundreds. I don't know why <laughs> I thought that. It, it doesn't. So don't pay up, up. But if you do find it for like, I would say five and under depending on the style. This was a uh, black poncho. And I did comp it before I accepted the offer like we talked about yesterday. And they were right on. 35 was about what it was worth. I think I had it priced at 60. Okay. Right. Eight ounces. Sweet. All right, Sailor Moon DVD. I love selling the there Sailor Moons. This is an anime, if you're unfamiliar. Always look up anime. That's the rule. <laughs> Do you want a pad? What do you need for that? Yeah, just a little bit of... Do we have small bubble still? I still need water. I know. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna send this media mail, I believe, right? Um, yeah, I think you can. There's no, there aren't any commercials or anything. No. Anytime there's an advertisement, you can't send it media mail. So, I'm gonna tape it. You want this tape? So this sold for $19 plus $4.99 shipping. And we paid 95 cents for it. Amazing. All right, last one. SpongeBob pink pants. Now, this guy was special. <laughs> he has a couple of things going for him. Don't. 
don't go picking up all the Spongebobs. Most of them are not worth anything. But this one is special. Okay, he's for breast cancer awareness. He has the tag, which is still in really good shape. Beanie Baby's breast... It's a Beanie Baby! Ah! <laughs> ah! Okay. Anyway. Uh, we Oh my gosh, I think we sold this twice now, but they never paid. It's very in demand, so if you find one, definitely get it. It sold for twice... It sold for $26. $26 plus $4.99 shipping. So, I mean, we paid $1.91 for it. And I think if we would have waited, we could have gotten like $35. Okay, but $26 for us, no sale day, we're good. I wrote the weight on the thing. I weighed it and I was like, hmm. Make sure his tag doesn't get smooshed. Yep. Do you have like a nice, kind of smaller box? Because this is like. Yeah, I do. I have lots of nice. Like a small flat yeah, something? Yeah, I do. Ooh, look at that. Boom. Very nice. That's perfect. And it's, it's more like SpongeBob. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. We didn't have any Parsh or Mercari sales for Facebook at all. If you asked me if I'd cross-listed over there, I would say no. <laughs> but then again, you already knew that, right? Because we didn't have any sales. It's fine. I'll be better. SpongeBob. Six ounces. Sweet. Every single thing we're sending is first class. Gotta love it. It's crazy. Gotta love it. Okay, 12 ounces. Take a bag. ounces. Eight ounces. Five and six. You get the small bag today. Sweet. Okay. Come on. There we go. Remember to post your questions below for the Q&A on Friday. Yes. Yeah. Alright, first up is the Lane Bryan shorts. Okay. Also, we're live listing tonight. Just a reminder. Friendly reminder. We had 41 people there last Tori night. Birch shoes. It was work time. Hopefully you guys learned something today along with us that try all the boxes. Because we were about to throw these in a padded flat rate and pay three more dollars just because we didn't try them in a box. I'm just saying. All that money adds up. It really does. Okay, this is the Peruvian Connection. Oh, these labels are starting to curl up. We're running, getting towards the end of the roll there. We've gotten backups for days. Not when I run out of labels. Oh, I love how cute this little bag is. Sailor Moon. Oh, I forgot to do the media. Huh? Oh. It's only 388. It's fine. Uh, that sounds about right. <laughs> and the SpongeBob. Media mail is only like super cheap if you're shipping really heavy in comparison, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. All right, there we go. 
quick and easy. Okay, I'm gonna prepare our bins haul. All right, I'm gonna go check in with Mojo and drop this stuff off. It's your moment with Mojo. Say hi, friend. It's post office time. I'll be back in a minute, okay? All right, bye. Hey guys, I'm back from the post office, so we get to find out what we really made. Action! Okay, it's freezing in here. It is pretty cold. We sold, this is Vendu. All right, let me get in here for the peeps, if there's anybody new. I just inputted all of our information. Okay. And we sold five things for $157 in gross and then $102.97 in profit. Yeah, that's a pretty good percentage. I mean, it's tight. Yeah. So if you, I mean, that's that's with the cost of goods, the fees taken out, that's what goes into our bank. It's a hundred bucks today. Every day is not great, you yeah, know? That's exactly right. Eh. Eh. All right, let's do our bins haul. Let's do the bins haul. Okay. So we did a mini bins trip. It wasn't the best day, but we got some things that I'm gonna show you. Uh, we spent $13.11 and then we got 26 items. So 26 items to resell. Some things are not to resell. Right. And I'll show you those and hopefully, so that's 50 cents a thing. Okay. Hopefully we can make some money. Yeah, let's see what we got. Okay, and Dan and I shop separately. Yep. So I don't know what some of this is. <laughs> you. Yes, me, for sure. <laughs> Cuphead. Yeah. Okay, so we got this t-shirt. We normally pick up... It's a video game t-shirt. Video game, anime, we pick it up. So we're going to see what this goes for. Great. Yep. A lot of, I mean, we didn't comp a lot of this stuff, but we did comp... Okay, we didn't comp everything, but we comped a lot and got rid of a lot. Yes, we did. We did not just fill up the car. Trying to be really good. This is a dress... What? <laughs> As I show a Justin what Bieber shirt. What <laughs> are you doing? This is me. With your life. This was right me. Now. People love the Beeb. I guess. This is a tour shirt. Tour shirts do no, okay. No, tour shirts are good. You're right. Concert merch is always a good Yeah, so for 50 cents, and this one didn't have any cracking on the graphic, I think we can make some money on this. All right, all right. The Beebs. Okay, I was trying to find the other part of this, and then I meant to put this back. <laughs> Whoops. These are sparkly shorts, but they're new a tag from oh. Victoria's Secret. Okay. I was really looking for the cami that went with this. Yeah, you couldn't I, find it? I didn't find it, but... Who doesn't want lacy booty shorts? Right. Okay. I bought this for a play, but I wanted to show you yes. that this is a classic Cuba Vera shirt. It actually is a Cuba Vera brand. A Cuba Vera. Nice. Okay. Uh, and what distinguishes this, so I bought this for the odd couple and, and it takes place in the 1960s. What yes. distinguishes it is all the pockets. Oh, there is a bunch of pockets. I just, yeah, nice. Yeah. Okay. So they kind of look like bowling shirts. Um, they're normally this color, and then they have these accent buttons. Yes. I don't know how much Cuba Veras resell for, but I can imagine that, because there are some Cuba Veras that are just plain, I can imagine that the ones with the pockets do better. Probably right, yes. Okay. I bought this. Uh, I, so I believe that style of shirt is called a Guayabera. That's what that shirt's called. Bless you. Yeah. Thank well, you. Now, now you know. Now, and knowing is half the battle. <laughs> this is a baby blanket from this brand called, I don't know, Love Reverie. Hey, okay. I don't know, but it is made of organic cotton, so I'm just going to try it. Yep. Peak Abu blanket. And, right. And yes, no, we still have not have not listed the pea dress. Sorry. Get it out of here. You can, <laughs> you can come closer if it's in the way. <laughs> It has a stain. I need to stain treat it. Okay, Vintage Toys Rebel. Uh -oh. Here we uh -oh. go. I found those. These are Tommy. Hold on. Let me put that back. I got a, it's got major glare. So this brand is the same okay, brand that makes, um, like, I think Polly Pockets were originally the, the, um, the Pokemon Polly Pocket I have. And then yep. they also, Thomas the Train. Okay. It's a really popular toy brand. These are eggs. Oh, my God. And they're all here. I think they all make noise or something, too. They'll do something. I'm going to figure it out. Yeah. Okay, anyway. Cool. That. All right. I got this Moleskine in the package from Choctaw Casino. Oh, very nice. Okay. I, I love these journals. Yeah. So maybe someone wants it with Choctaw, but you can't really tell, so I'll just sell it. There's money to be made there. I don't know if these work. <laughs> oh, my God. Are those Squishmallow earphones? You are right. Wow. So we're going to test those out. Okay. With my T Swift. Sweet. Okay, this is from 2008. It's a little people box. Looks like a barn. Barn box. Barn box. 
I don't. I didn't comp that. I just. You just grabbed it. Just went with my heart. All right, that's. And then this, I went with my heart as well. We sell these a lot. Some of them are worth more than others. This is a Polly Pocket, and it has all the little space cadets in there. Okay. All right. So that's good. I got this because I couldn't not. <laughs> I have no idea what it is, but look at this thing. This Somebody made that. Somebody yeah. made this, and it's amazing, and it was about to go to the dump. And I was like, nope. <laughs> so I'll figure that out. You got this. I did. Those are, here, those are foodie dice. I looked at them. So it's kind of like Top Chef, or what's that show called, where you get the ingredients? Um, chopped. Chopped. Yeah. You roll the dice, and you get the ingredients, and you make something. Interesting. Yep. All right, Littlest Pet Shop is having a moment. So this is a bag. You don't say. Okay. A bag of Littlest Pet Shops. Oh my God, look at these creepy. If I was creepy. a more astute binzer, I would have taken these out of this bag because of the oh, weight. Oh, not paid for the weight of the bag? Yeah. <laughs> nice. But it yeah. was nice that they were already contained. Okay, this guy. Look at this guy. I don't know what, he's got fuzz all over him. Yeah, man. Should I push it? All right, then we got this lovey from Modern Baby. I don't care where it's from. Right, you need to pick them all up. Pick them all up. You got Domo. I got Domo in a panda suit. His tail needs a little work. <laughs> all right, the Domos do well for us. Oh gosh, okay, wait, you got this. Some kind of charger situation. Yeah, we might end up keeping that, I don't know. Okay. It's a Dell USB-C charger. I was just like, eh. We always pick up chargers, so that's fine. This is a uh, Japanese character. These go. I looked oh. this up. It goes for 20. It's okay. Okay. But she's okay. in really good condition. Sweet. So I like that. I died. <laughs> what you got there? Vintage thread spools. Oh, I picked every man. single one of them out of the bins. Wow. Um, as a seamstress, I love this kind of stuff. But also for props, it's great. Okay. I also... So they were like these wooden spools. Yeah. And there's just many, many, many of them. Very cool. So I'm going to lot them up. I'm going to keep some of them for myself. But like, look at this old twine. Wow. Ah, I couldn't let this go to the, the landfill. Okay, but I forgot in here, <laughs> hidden, I found, I dig in bins. Like, I dig. You, you're not scared. I am not, I found all the golden girls. Oh, oh her head broke. Shut up. You found the golden girls? head broke oh no dang you probably put her in the heater i forgot oh. they were in there look at these and those are amazing no i found every single one what even are those but i don't we, know we gotta, we gotta fix her head i think you melted her head but i didn't mean to melt her head i'm sorry okay anyway <clears throat> so i didn't count those in the count i bought this i don't know what it is but i couldn't leave it there look how cute is that milk glass i don't know not sure it looks like it, but I don't know how to tell. I'm going to do some research. It's just so beautiful. It's nice. Yeah. We can keep this in our house as a little tray. You got this. I did. Disc golf. Yeah, it's a Whammo 1979 Disc Golf Association Frisbee. Great. Yeah. Okay, and then I got... I, I keep seeing Boo with his face over there in the corner. I got you these. Oh, I didn't thanks. count these. So we Post get it's... office supplies. That's why I wanted to show you. And these. So these two things are reselling supplies. Oh, nice. To put in men's shoes. We couldn't find our men's ones. And then he needed these. So we got those of the bins. Those do not count in our total. Okay, this little guy. I don't know. He look at rough. <laughs> I don't even know what... Vin... Vin... Girl, I don't know. I don't either. Okay, that. This little thing. Oh, is this what I just sold? There's another Littlest Pet Shop thing. Yeah, yeah. Littlest Pet Shop. He's, he's... A little dirty. They have a code. You can pull that thing and it has like a code in there. It's, it's something. It's something. Okay. Oh my god, what is that? I don't know, but it says toot toot and it's all trained, <laughs> so I got it. Perfect. I also got these Palm Pilot pens. Okay. Because you never know. You never know. We have one of these listed already. Quantity two. Yep. <laughs> Um, you said this was good. Oh. Yeah, man. This is like South Park cow. It's the South Park cow. He's pretty dirty, but there was only one listed on all of eBay, and it was like, I think it's they had it listed dirty. for like uh, one or two hundred dollars, maybe more. Hmm. And it looked slightly different, so that one might, I don't know, that one might be worth more or less. We'll, we'll find out. Okay, and here's another lovey from Angel Deer. Okay. Look at this cute oh my God. <laughs> and then this is a frog. Frogs do well for us. This is Ty Floyd. 
Okay. I don't know why people love a frog. They sure do. And then this big one. Oh my god. The big bunny. He's got a little schmutz in one spot, but it's this floppy pretty decent. friend. Floppy friends. Yep. Made for Mervins or something. Oh my gosh, I cannot. My phone has been blowing up all day long. With spam, spam and telemarketers? Mm -hmm. mm. At least a hundred times. It, yeah, that's the most annoying thing ever. So this is a rabbit? Uh, yeah, it's a rabbit. Oh yeah. <laughs> I guess we need to get him listed. Yeah. You guys got rabbits, get them listed. Right. Okay, I think that is everything from the bins. We have a small thrift haul that we will post again tomorrow of non-bins merch. Okay. Because we're not thrifting these two days because of the weather. Right. I have a lot of... <laughs> so, if you want a junk bag update, I listed... There were 75 things total in the junk bags that were listable, and I think I've listed about 60 of them so far. And then the rest of them are kind of over here in categories. All right. Well, we'll get to those soon enough, right? Um, we've been listing them live. Yeah, those are true. the things we've been doing in the photo box. Okay. Okay. So now it, this bins was time to bring out. So what we're doing is we're not shopping ahead of time, really. This was stuff was in the heater. And then I was listing the stuff that we had just gotten out of the heater. Now that that's done and off the desk, we brought in the new heater stuff. Right. Just we are not having a death pile. No, not doing it. All right, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. We are going to get ready for some live listing in just well, uh, real soon. We'll see you tonight. Bye. Bye. Bye.